Yes, we're kicking it for tea. Bruce, can I ask you, please, talk to me about your ideal meal. My ideal meal. Let's see, if I could avail myself of some fresh colostrum, maybe from a very attractive um, mother who's just given birth, you know, kind of like, hey, there's two of those, let me have one for a little <laughs> while. Uh, I think that would be the uh, appetizer. Um, it's got to be like some bone broth. Uh, get, get a little bone broth soup in there uh, some, with some really good sauerkraut juice in it. Um, maybe a raw egg yolk cracked into that. Um, after that, wow, you know, it's up for grabs. It really depends where I would be. I mean, you know, if I'm in Hawaii, it's probably going to be mostly raw vegan. It's going to be like papayas, coconuts, those giant avocados and stuff. If I am in like the the highlands of Ecuador, it, you know, it could be some else. It could be like some yuca, uh, some root vegetables, some mashua. You know, there's it's it really it really depends on the climate too, uh, and uh, you know, we probably have to have some uh, some sort of raw chocolate in there, um, and but you know, my my expanding my diet outward again. You know, I'm definitely into like you know. Right now, I'm not eating. I'm not, I'm like I'm not eating salads. So, I'd be like, hey, if, if we're having if we're having a salad with that, can you please steam it, <laughs> and put a little ghee on it. Yum. Yeah, I want so I want that salad steamed uh, with ghee, please. And you know, um, that's where I'm at. Sounds good. Yeah. Sounds pretty next level. And yeah. it really depends too. I mean, from a permaculture sp perspective, and you know, I've lived on farms. I've raised animals. Um, you know, if I was living on a farm where we had lots of animals, and we were raising them, our, them ourselves, and we were cleaning them, slaughtering them, processing the meat, you know, there might be like a, a nice choice cut of lamb on that plate. Oh, gosh. And like I said, it really depends, you know. I mean, I, I think like sustainability, uh, it's like such a relative term. I mean, it's like, you know, you have chickens outside your door and you don't eat eggs. You know, or, you know, something like that. I mean, it's it's like we're going to find out. Here's the deal with the whole, like, sustainability thing. We are going to find out what true sustainability looks like. And it's, it's our, a, a lot of people's karma is going to catch up with their dogma. We're going to see what happens. Tell me a little bit more about that. Well, I mean, you know, okay, I'm going to be living in an eco-village in uh, Vancouver Island this summer where we're going to have a zero-mile eatery. This is our eco-village uh, north of Victoria on Vancouver Island. So we've got a zero-mile eatery, but you know, what do we have? What are we growing there? We don't have avocados, bananas there. You know? So, um, I mean, I, I had a superfood smoothie for breakfast this morning, but I'm in Ecuador. So, you know, I've got mangoes and bananas and all kinds of stuff, um, but at the zero-mile eatery, it's not going to be a superfood smoothie for breakfast. It's probably going to be an omelet with some uh, local, you know, goat cheese and some eggs and some veggies from the extensive gardens there. And you know what? That's going to be sustainable for that environment in that time. Um, so they're going to be people are going to be making big adjustments in either where they live or what they eat. Up in the Pacific Northwest where I live, I grow a kimchi garden. I make tons of sauerkraut myself. Mm. Um, I'm experimenting growing because I want to do it all locally. I can do everything um, except the ginger, but I'm growing ginger as an indoor house plant now. Um, so, and that is really what I did. You know, I, I, I took that knowledge of enzymes and raw vegan food. And so, like, let's say I do eat a bunch of cooked food, I almost always have a big whack of miso or some sauerkraut, kimchi, some sort of fermented food. You know, I'll, I'll ferment. I'll, I'll try anything. You know, I fermented a bunch of radish and garlic last year. They were delicious. They were like melt in your mouth. Mm. I want what people eat to be beneficial to their environment. I mean, we should be interacting with our environments. You know, we're here at this beautiful place, and we've got avocados growing like 10 feet away. We've got uh, bananas here. We've got a garden with kale and edible flowers and stuff, you know. If we were eating a diet where we weren't eating those things, we wouldn't be taking care of those trees and taking care of that garden. But if we're eating them, we're taking care of it, and we're improving the landscape. We're providing food sources. We're improving the soil, you know. Uh, so I think, like, the optimal situation is grow as much of your own food, get connected with other people who are making artisan food, 
Um, I mean, really, that's where I'm at. I'm, I'm moving away from being a gourmet chef into becoming a food artisan. Where, you know, I'll make like 50 gallons of sauerkraut. And then yes. I'll trade it. I'll grow a ton of garlic. You know, up where I live in Washington, I'll grow tons of garlic. I'll trade it. So it's like we're becoming food artisans and we're getting in informal food exchange networks. Bruce Horowitz, everyone. Super mega famous babe right here. And um, thanks for sharing your story of transcendence. My pleasure. 4D, baby. <laughs>